Thanks for clicking. We had another big week in China's real estate and growing economic crisis this week, as it was announced that Evergrande is under investigation yet again by Hong Kong's Financial Reporting Council. While Evergrande's ongoing and continual investigations doesn't look good for an industry that has been plagued by a lack of transparency and defaults throughout this year, Beijing finally announced that it would be stepping up to the plate this week, backstopping the debts of a select number of China's real estate developers. Amid the announcement that Beijing would be guaranteeing the bonds of real estate developers, the People's Bank of China, the PBOC, announced that it would be cutting interest rates amid China's worsening economy. Given that China's economic rebound is almost a near necessity for the recovery of the global economy, Beijing's intervention may well prove timely. Thanks. So what I want to do today is briefly go over Evergrande's most recent investigation, take a look at Beijing's plan to bail out a select number of real estate developers, and then take a look at Beijing's plan to get the Chinese economy going, to get people spending. As we'll see, Beijing is ramping up its efforts to calm China's real estate crisis and get the economy moving again. We'll continue to have updates out on the results of those efforts on this channel every Friday. If you want to get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe. But for now, let's get into Evergrande. If you'll recall last month, Evergrande's chief financial officer was forced to resign amidst concerns over his involvement in the pledging of $2 billion that was seized by creditors last March. Given the problems associated with Evergrande not knowing who or when the $2 billion was pledged, and with responsibility rising to the level of the chief financial officer, Hong Kong's Financial Reporting Council is expanding its investigation into Evergrande's Property Services Division, auditing its books back to 2020. While we obviously don't have the results of this investigation yet, as we've seen repeatedly on this channel, with Evergrande, where there's smoke, there is fire. Thank you and the Financial Reporting Council is looking back at Evergrande's books for the past two years, looking at its 2020 and 2021 books. So there is definitely a worry that the probe by the Financial Reporting Council could reveal more debts than were thought to be the case, which could further exasperate this crisis, this real estate crisis that has been going on, which started with Evergrande over a year ago. While Evergrande continues to flounder, Beijing appears to have recognized the extent of the crisis on its hands and has instructed its state-backed China insurance company to guarantee the onshore bonds of a select number of real estate developers. The list of developers includes Longfor, Cizen, Sifi, and Country Garden, China's largest real estate developer. And Beijing's plan to backstop the debts of these developers definitely comes at a timely moment, as it was announced yesterday that Country Garden's profit had slumped 70% over the past year. Indeed, it was announced this week that China's bond insurance company would provide unconditional and irrevocable guarantees for the full amount of the bonds, virtually guaranteeing that these developers will not default on their onshore debts. Clearly, Beijing is getting increasingly worried about the state of China's real estate sector, especially vis-a-vis -vis the banks and the onshore funding market. With mortgage boycotts spreading, slumping home prices, and a weakening economy, it's little wonder why. These worries were even more clearly evident this week when the People's Bank of China cut interest rates for the first time in January, reducing its main rate from 2.1% to 2%, and cutting its one-year funding facility rate from 285 to 2.75%. While a 0.1% interest rate cut may not seem like a big deal, especially by Western standards, I'll take it. it it definitely is in China, as it signals a reversal from Beijing's focus on reducing debt and keeping a lid on inflation. Bloomberg noted that with the PBOC cutting rates, clearly Beijing is shifting its focus from controlling inflation and reducing debt to propping up the economy to getting people spending again. So as the economy continues to stagnate, continues to weaken, expect to see more support coming down from Beijing as they look to get their hands more and more wrapped around this real estate sector and get people spending again. 
Backstopping these real estate developers was a major move from Beijing this week, from a government that in many ways induced this real estate crisis to begin with, as they sought to get the leverage out of the system with their free red lines policy. So backstopping, basically guaranteeing the bonds of these real estate developers was a major move on the part of Beijing this week. And I think we're seeing a major shift on the part of the central government as they look to get their hands wrapped around this real estate crisis as they try to control the spread in the face of these ongoing mortgage boycott. Clearly when Beijing came out with their three red lines policy, they knew that some developers were going to default and I think they knew Evergrande was going to be on the chopping block but I don't think they realized it was going to spread to the extent that it has throughout the economy. Whether or not Beijing will be successful in controlling the spread of this real estate crisis remains to be seen, but we'll obviously have updates out on that on this channel every Friday. If you want to get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe. But for now, thanks so much for watching.